Hi, this is Misha, and this is part four in our look at the Italian Carcano. And this time we're going to look at the M38 series, 1938. Originally, we had the infantry rifle, a standard mass general issue, with carbines going to specialists and crews of various things and so on and so forth. After World War I, it was decided by the Mussolini government and the military to go to a short carbine with a barrel under 18 inches as standard issue. However, this revealed to have several shortcomings throughout combat in the late 20s and 30s in Ethiopia and other theaters. So, it was decided to go to a so-called short rifle, this model here, the M38. The M38 has a barrel of 21 inches so still quite short, but with four extra inches to, to give a uh, three and some change, extra inches to hopefully give better sight radius and better performance. More importantly though, the M38 introduced a new round. Now I actually do have some 7.35 somewhere around here, but couldn't find them today, sorry. So I'll just show this, this is the 6.5. What they did, they wanted to be able to use the same in-block clip and therefore the same receiver and magazine, so they blew it up as much as they could. They widened this round and increased the throat of the cartridge as much as they were able to get more power, more penetration. 6.5 was perfectly good at taking out human targets, soft targets, quite accurate, low flash and recoil, which was very handy in carbines, probably why there were so many Carcano carbines compared to, say, carbines in 8mm, which have tremendous muzzle flash. However, it wasn't very good at taking out light armor or penetrating foliage or other, you know, things in the way. And by the 1930s, this was becoming more and more of a military issue. So they increased the bullet to 7.35, and it was officially known as 7.35 by 51, which is as big as they could get it while still using the same clips and receiver. They combined this with the new 21 inch barrel profile. They went to a simply fixed rear sight, battle sight, for the 7.3. We're at 200 meters as a fixed rear sight. We have a turn down bolt handle, like a carbine. The whole Carcano bolt has not changed since the very first video and the very first infantry rifles. I mean, same system we've always been using. Same goes for the magazine. So nothing in the receiver area has really changed. We do have this round barrel here, which you started to see in the 30s as a manufacturing update and shortcut. We do have a whole new pattern of stock though. We have side sling mounts and they're different, especially this front one from previous. We have grooves here. We have relatively short upper hand guard with exposed barrel a little bit, but we do have a full length stock. The originals would just have one barrel band, but quickly they would add a second band for better support. Of course, since we have a fixed front sight, really unchanged. And we have this very unique bayonet. This was more or less supposed to remain attached to the gun. And when needed, you press this button up here and this pulls down and comes out. This hinge is very similar in the button to what you see on a cavalry carbine. And if you just, if you need to do it, this bayonet is removable altogether. So it's an interesting bayonet with a combination of features. As you see, we have a whole new lug system itself, much larger, more durable lug compared to previous. And we have this cutout on the underside of the stock to allow the bayonet to fold into. And finally, we have a storage compartment as on the cavalry carbine for a sectional cleaning rod because again we have that bayonet that we're expecting to uh, to leave on the gun most times. They even had a scabbard for these 
if you didn't have it on the gun, but I don't have the scabbard, sorry guys. So this new short rifle pattern and the new 7.35 cartridge was adopted in 1938 and would go into mass production and would be produced in very large numbers throughout 1939 and 1940. The new round performed well and generally speaking soldiers liked it just fine. They definitely liked the short rifle pattern as it gave a little more than a carbine but didn't weigh just a whole lot more. Unfortunately, while the Italian military, the general staff, wanted to go completely over to the new cartridge, there was still a lot of 6.5 in the supply chains and a lot of older 6.5 caliber guns. So they were having to supply both cartridges and this quickly became a logistic nightmare for a country that found itself allied to Nazi Germany in the middle of World War II and who had a very low budget and quite frankly didn't want to be at war in the first place. Mussolini wanted an empire, but he didn't really want to fight for it and neither did the Italians. They wanted to restore that old Roman glory, but they really didn't want to kill people for it, at least most. I mean, I'm not saying that they were all nice guys, but there wasn't that uh, bloodlust that you saw in, say, Nazi Germany. So this gun was very short-lived. By 1940, the 7.35 cartridge was already taken out of frontline service and production ended. In addition to the logistic nightmare, they had a problem with ammo consistency. The, the, the 7.35 cartridges being made in Italy were just all over the place. Some would be hot loaded, some would be underloaded, so groups were everywhere. It just, it, they tried to do too much right on the eve of war and it really, it really hurt them. So they simplified things by just simply going back to 6.5. Now before we move on, this rifle included here, most of this, the Model 38 short rifles we see today are actually have the SA marking from Finland for the Finnish military mark. This is because in 1939, since Finland was fighting against Russia, that was their primary adversary, Italy and Germany were nominally allies with it. So 94,000 of these were sent to Finland where they were absolutely hated. For one thing, the Finns hated the fixed sights and they hated the non-standard caliber. They did try to modify the sights a little bit by getting a little extra range by changing out the front sight blade, but by and large these were given to coastal artillery batteries as secondary defensive guns and quickly either thrown in the snow or put into storage as, as soon as they could to be replaced by really anything else. So while we see a lot of these coming out of Finland and a lot of them are in excellent condition because they didn't see a lot of use. They, they, they didn't, they, they just didn't need them, they didn't want them. Finland was trying to stick with 7.62 by 54R, or failing that, at least 8mm Mauser or 6.5mm Swedish slash Norwegian. Now, while most of the guns produced in 1939 and 1940 were of the short rifle M38 pattern, they did make a few cavalry carbines and TS carbines. This would be, they would be identical to their 6.5 brethren, except they would have this fixed rear sight, non-game twist rifling, and it would be round here. Otherwise, they still had the 17.7 .7 inch barrel. They just fired the slightly larger cartridge. These are pretty rare today, and so, you know, I don't have one here to show, and they would look the same on camera anyway. But, just because the new 7.35 cartridge itself kind of failed, the new M38 pattern did not. They would quickly go and retrofit this design to fire the traditional 6.5 by 52 Carcano cartridge, and that became the 9138 short rifle. The only real difference, aside from the marking for caliber, was that its battle sight was set for 300 meters. Now, contrary to some belief, they never really re-barreled guns 
for 7.3 down to 6.5. All the 6.5 short rifles were purpose built as such. What they would do, they would start to, you know, standardize back on 6.5 as is the frontline cartridge in 1940, and they would just pull all the 7.3s out of frontline service and move them to secondary, auxiliary, guard, police, you know, people who weren't expected to use them because it was a pretty limited ammo supply. The guys in the front were expected to shoot 6.5 again. So you started to see the M38 short rifle. Likewise, and you saw this in episode two, but I thought I'd bring it back out, this is a 9138 cavalry carbine. Now this is exactly how one of the 7.3s would have looked. Except this one is made after 1940, back when they switched to 6.5 again. So we have the fixed rear sight and a few other minor simplifications. But, uh, you know, essentially it's the same thing. And this is where the 9138 came from. Now these would be produced, the 38 variants and 6.5, until at least 1943. And many would stay in Italian service until the late 40s, early 50s. Now before we go, we have one other variant here. This is a so-called 38S, or 991-38S. This is the Special Troops version. This would be how the 7.3, or even 6.5, 9138TS versions would have looked. Fixed rear sight. Standard bolt system we've always been using. More traditional bayonet lug, as on the long infantry rifle in the 9124 and 9128 carbines. Fixed front sight, short cleaning rod under the barrel. You know, typical TS. This just has the bottom sling swivels only. No side swivels, which was a variation. And no storage compartment in the stock. What makes this one different, though, even though externally it looks extremely similar, this is chambered for 8mm Mauser. These can be marked 7.9 or 7.92, depending on the factory they came out of. This would be the standard German round. And there's a lot of back and forth about were these made for the, the Germans in, in World War II. It's very, very clear that the Germans did use a Carcanos in the war, but most seem to have been in 6.5. However, this gun does have a small Waffen amped on it. And I've seen two or three others identical to this that, that had it. So, you know, who knows? I'm not going to get into it. It's very clear that Italy did make these guns in 8mm for someone. A lot of these would show up in Egypt after the war. And you can usually tell those because they're very rough with a lot of the bluing taken off and quite a few dings in the stock. Now, obviously, 6.5 or even 7.3 are quite a bit smaller than 7.9 8mm Mauser. So they had to make some modifications. Plus, 8mm Mauser is quite a, a more stout round. Quite a few of the 8mm guns were single shot. Now, this one still has a box mag. And these would use modified in-block clips, at least as best, I don't know, as best anyone knows. They would enlarge them slightly for the 8mm round, and they would go from holding 6 cartridges to only 5. Additionally, they had to make a cutout here in the receiver to allow the longer round. After all, this is 8 by 57 so we're quite a bit longer. So they cut the receiver out. The bolt system and all that's pretty much unchanged. Obviously the rear side is calibrated for the different round. The barrel is larger internally. However, the external diameter is virtually the same, so we basically have a thinner barrel. And we have these reinforcing bolts put through the stock here and here, these, these lugs, recoil lugs. No matter what, whoever used these or didn't use these, it, it, that's immaterial. It was very clear that this is definitely a wartime or post-war stopgap measure. But it's an interesting variation with a lot of debate still kind of around exactly 
why these were made and for whom originally. Again, though, it's clear that a lot of them ended up in Egypt, whether they were originally made for the Egyptian military or not. I, I believe that some were, but I also think some were really made in World War II for one reason or another. And again, these do, some of these do have some small waffen amps and different things. It's a very interesting story, and I suggest you read up on it. It's, if nothing else, neat. And these don't command a premium over the standard guns, so it's always an interesting variation to have. That's why I picked this one up. In addition to giving me an example of an 8mm, I didn't have a 9138TS style, so this kind of rounds out my uh, TS variant collection, too. I just thought it was interesting. Well, that pretty much runs us through the Carcanos, or the Carcani, the Carcani. So we have essentially three calibers on the table here, and each were made during World War II. Italy would never use the 8 mil, but other people would. It seems like in Egypt these are often relegated to drill or, or training rifles, though. It really is too powerful a round to shoot too much through a Carcano action. Then again, 6.5 was a little too powerful to shoot through a Vetterly action, and that didn't stop the Italians. <laughs> Carcano production would essentially end after World War II. There might be a couple of years of guns being put together from leftover parts just to try to get some quick cash, you know, from already existing parts. You do see some guns that seem to have been assembled and refurbished after World War II. But main production ended in 1944. And it's not surprising. After World War II, the, the global market was flooded with surplus military guns. And yes, before someone says something... This gun here, but in 6.5, was the model that was used against uh, John F. Kennedy. It was a 91.38 with a 21-inch barrel, but it was in the 6.5, as I said, not 7.3. I think this one's a really neat variant. Only made for a few years, and this bayonet is definitely unique. <laughs> There's a similar bayonet on the MAB-38A some machine gun from Beretta as well. But it's funny how this action in the magazine really changed very, very little at all since the original adoption. These are just fun to collect. Even today, they're still inexpensive compared to other World War I or World War II guns especially. They've gone up some in recent years, but they're still very affordable. And they're, they definitely have a lot of history, and they, they're actually quite a bit of fun to shoot. So if you haven't really looked into the Carcanos, I kind of suggest you do. And if you haven't checked out our video one, two, or three in this series, I'd appreciate it if you could as you get time. And if you have, we really appreciate your time there. Well, if you have any questions, comments, please post them below. If you like the video, as always, please click like. If you have not subscribed and could do so, we'd really appreciate that. This is Misha, and please tune in again next time for more hopefully interesting videos. We'll catch you then.